In the tranquil expanse of the South China Sea, beneath its serene surface, the waters are turbulent with geopolitical currents. This is a tale of contention, diplomacy, and the quest for peace in a region where the horizon is marred by the shadows of ships standing off in a silent yet loud confrontation. At the heart of this narrative lies the Second Thomas Shoal, an uninhabited reef that has become an emblem of the complex disputes shadowing the South China Sea. Known as Renai Zhao in China and Ayunjin Shoal in the Philippines, this reef lies within the Philippines' 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone, a declaration supported by the principles of international law including the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. However, China's claim, marked by the ambiguous yet expansive Nine Dash Line, encompasses the reef as part of its sovereign territories. The tranquility of the sea is often pierced by the roar of water cannons and the harsh metal clang of ships colliding. This isn't a scene from an ancient naval battle, but a description of recent confrontations that have drawn international concern. The latest incident, a collision between Chinese and Philippine Coast Guard vessels, has escalated tensions, spotlighting the delicate balance of peace and severity in this maritime region. The Philippine Coast Guard accused a Chinese vessel of ramming one of its ships, causing damage and injuring four Filipino crew members. This clash is not just about two ships in the vast ocean, but about the larger struggle over maritime rights and territorial sovereignty. The Philippine vessels, engaged in a resupply mission to military personnel stationed on a wrecked ship, deliberately scuttled on the reef in 1999 to assert sovereignty, found their efforts thwarted by Chinese ships. These blockades and confrontations have become a recurrent narrative echoing the unresolved disputes that plague the South China Sea. Beijing, however, paints a different picture. The intervention was described as a necessary measure, a professional and restrained response to what they claim was a violation of China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights by the Philippines. According to this narrative, the responsibility for the incident rests solely with the Philippine side. Amidst this maritime tension, a voice of concern emerged from the Korean Peninsula. South Korea, traditionally maintaining a cautious and neutral stance, expressed its deep concern over the dangerous escalation at the Second Thomas Shoal. The use of water cannons against Philippine vessels was particularly arming for Seoul, signaling a departure from their long-held position of neutrality. This expression of concern is more than diplomatic rhetoric. It represents a call for peace, stability, and a rules-based order in the South China Sea, underscoring the importance of freedom of navigation and overflight. Beijing's response to Seoul's comments was swift and sharp. The foreign ministry warned South Korea to behave cautiously and in a neutral manner, emphasizing that Seoul was not a direct party in the South China Sea disputes. Yet, South Korea's statements, according to Beijing, have shifted from their historically neutral stance, implicitly or explicitly blaming China for the tensions. This development, Beijing argues, adds unnecessary burdens on China-South Korea relations, urging Seoul to refrain from hyping the issue. The South China Sea, with its strategic waterways and rich natural resources, has long been a stage for complex territorial disputes involving several nations. The recent confrontations near the Second Thomas Shoal and the international reactions they have elicited underscore the broader implications of these maritime disputes. They are not merely about control over a reef or access to resources, but about the principles that govern international relations and maritime law. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea serves as a cornerstone for these principles advocating for the peaceful resolution of disputes and the maintenance of a rules-based order at sea. As nations navigate these troubled waters, the call for diplomacy, restraint, and adherence to international law becomes ever more urgent. The South China Sea, with its promise of unity and cooperation, also holds the peril of division and conflict. The path forward is fraught with challenges 
but it is only through dialogue, respect for severity, and adherence to international norms that peace can be achieved. The second Thomas Scholl, silent and submerged, remains a witness to these unfolding dramas, a testament to the enduring quest for harmony in a region where the currents of history, severity, and diplomacy meet.